Not that smart. I can't think I had like that. Um, I'll start with some injury updates for you. Um, uh, Christian Morris, he has like the flu or something, so we held him out. Duarte's doing better. He'll go this evening. He did he did quite a bit this morning in the individual and everything. Uh, they're still thinking it was just a cramp and not a pull, so he should be back at it. Um, we got three guys that had concussions, so we're holding them until they're cleared to, uh, you know, fully cleared. As you guys know, we don't mess with that stuff. Kevin McReynolds, Ian Tobler, and Poase. Um, we sent them all back down to get evaluated in Westwood today, so they won't be out here for a couple days. Um, Eddie had an x-ray yesterday. We're waiting for him to read it, but he felt a lot better today. So uh, we just got to make sure with the back that, uh, that we're doing the right thing, but we need to get him out here as well. So um, <laughs> I don't know where the rest of it is. Who else was missing? Marsh. 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 Oh, he's okay. He, his knee's sore. He did something yesterday, but he's fine. He's, he, he's going to be fine. He, he's been dehydrated. You know, I remember last year he had the problem. He's so lean and he sweats so much that he has a tendency to get dehydrated. And uh, we're just trying to keep his weight up and keep him feeling good. And we're going to go full gear tonight, full pads. We're going to have um, some live goal line and short yards. We're going to have a live period at the end. So I'd like him to be out here doing that. So we took it off a little bit this morning. We did the, we had the spider shells, the soft shells again today. I thought the work was good. The two minute was great. Just getting down here where we had the fourth down situation. Um, you're just trying to create all those 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 situations. We have to think through it. So um, it was good. Um, you know, some some young guys continue to impress. Um, you know, I look at uh, two outside linebackers, Miles Jack and Deion Hollins. You see a couple guys that really have tremendous skill set. Um, it's just a matter of getting them up to speed mentally, and uh, and then seeing how they hold up physically when it's, we start really banging. So, but uh, I, I don't know. I, mean, I just think. Things are going the way they're supposed to go. Right? Young guys, Jalen Ortiz continues to. Really yeah, you know, for a guy that hadn't played really, uh, he was more of a back. He's just he's fluid and he's got burst. He can lower center of gravity. He can change direction. He can accelerate. I like him. Uh, Darren Andrews as well. It seems to me, and maybe it's just you know I catch him at the right time, but it seems to me like Eldridge is making progress as well, feeling more comfortable. Um, Seems like Craig Lee's feeling more comfortable. Uh, Alex Redmond was back out there today doing team stuff, and he seemed to be okay. He went all the way through. So, um, Figgy's looking better. Uh, Are Darren and, and uh, Jalen going to be considered for any kind of special team? Probably? Yeah, I think I think you need to. I mean, you get speed like that, you got to find a way to use them. Now, we don't want to. Uh, if we're going to use them, we have to make sure we use them enough that it warrants, you know, yeah, using a red shirt. But if they can help us. We're gonna we're gonna use them, and they're trying to get to the point where they can help us. Have you, did you learn anything from last year, redshirting freshmen and stuff, that you can take to this year in terms of redshirting freshmen? Well, I mean, it's it's kind of a delicate deal because uh, you know you're always trying to win right now, uh, and so if you see a guy that can help you, you know, my instinct is to use him. But I think you also have to be sensitive to the kid. You know, if you're not going to use him to the extent where it's you know you're really getting something out of him, and he's really getting something out of the experience, then you hate to to waste that year just for a few plays. So we just have to be really careful and we have to really discuss it before we decide to put a guy in a game, you know, or put him in a position where he might go in a game and burn his red shirt, you know. But at the same time, if a guy can can help us, then we want to play him. Like, I think a great example is is Kenny Clark. You know, you look at what, the way Lee is playing so far and the way that Ellis has come along. And you okay, those are two really good nose guards. Kenny Clark is an outstanding player but he's probably still third in the rotation. And he's capable of playing as a freshman, but I don't know if it's worth it. And, and I'm not going to give him five plays a game, you know, and waste his red shirt. So we just have to, we have to take every situation and evaluate it on its own merits and make the best decisions for us and the team. Is that different from last year, or did you have that same mentality? No, it's just pretty, I mean, pretty much the same. Tried to. Yeah, yeah I, I felt like all the, the freshmen that played got something out of it and, and we got something out of them. You know, I guess if you look back and you said, was there any player that that, uh, that didn't redshirt that played that it was a waste for, I, I don't get the feeling that there was, you know, because I've thought about it a lot. Cause I, I don't want to cheat these kids, mm -hmm. you know, but at the same time, they want to play and we want them to play. So. I know Coach Clem said he, he wanted to hopefully have a starting first line or the, a line soon. 
Have you? What have you seen out of them, especially that right guard position? I know that's been the yeah. most contentious. Well, you you guys have noticed, I'm sure that um, really probably for the last three practices at least, um, Caleb's been in there consistently with the first group, and um, I'm not saying that it's his position, but you know we're trying to force feed him as much as we can. The thing about Caleb is he's he's strong. I mean, he's really physical when he gets his hands on guys. He's got a very high football IQ. You know, he really understands the game. He's very well coached in, in high school. Um, the obvious things are experience. You know, when things start moving fast in front of him or he gets different fronts, different looks, just processing the information, you know, that's just a function of experience. And then, um, you know, he, I don't know that any of these freshmen are used to practicing and playing at the pace that we play at. So he's handled it pretty well, though. So we just got to keep pushing him and, and see where he goes. But he, he certainly looks the part. I mean, he's, our offensive line, physically, they look good, like they're supposed to look. So, just make sure they really look good at that white position. Nate, yeah. And you know, when you ca he catches it in the flat, I'm not sure those little corners are going to want to tackle him. <laughs> he's got those gigantic hands, you know. He's just a, he's just a, you know, he's tough. tough. He's tougher than him. Yeah, I think he looks great there. I think there's a role for him. You know, I don't know how much you flex him out and ask him to run option routes and stuff. I think he'll get to that eventually. But you saw that little play where he's in the backfield and then he kind of bubbles out. You know, you get him on the edge, and he can go. I mean, he's a, look, at him. He's, look how long his arms are. He's 6'4", 240 or whatever. And, he's yeah. gone from offense. I wouldn't want to attack him. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah he's, a, he's, a great, he's a great kid. He's one of the hardest workers by far. With you feel Zumwalt like out, uh, Isaac Sabanea got a lot of time, and, yeah. and you're using him in a lot of nickel situations. What does he bring? Maturity. He, uh, it's not too big for him. I mean, he, doesn't, he doesn't conduct himself like a freshman. The other thing we did today is we had Miles Jack take some of the dime stuff at inside linebacker and try to work him in there. You know, those are two guys that are uh, physically mature and emotionally mature. And uh, they're two guys that we look at as guys that can help us immediately. And so um, we're going to try to get him as much work as we can. But the thing you like about Isaac is he just he, he really understands the defense already. Now, there's going to be things that happen that you know, he doesn't react to as quickly as you'd like. But he's just very mature. You know, and it's just not, the game's not too big for him. He doesn't seem overwhelmed by this level of play. And Jack's coverage skills lend him to be able to do that? Is yeah, that did you see what we did today during one-on-one? -on -one? Mm -hmm. I did. We yeah. put him down, we put, put Miles DBs. down there with the DBs and put him on slots. Because if you play dime and you're that dime linebacker, then you have to move out and cover slots sometimes. Not necessarily in man-to-man -man a whole lot. But we, we wanted to see how he did. And, you know, his technique is not there yet. And he grabs a lot, but his athleticism just... I mean, He's, you know, it's unbelievable. It really is. He just lowers his center of gravity. Has great change of direction. Um, ama amazing quickness. So, you know, you'll see us continue to put him down there and cover some wideouts. I want to know if he can do it or how close he can get or how far away he is, you know, technique-wise. But, uh, you know, those are the kind of guys you got to get on the field because they're going to make plays for you. Do you feel better about the ability to limit sacks given you know Brett's decision making and the offensive line looking better too? I think yeah, and I think it's both of those things. I think it's it's probably starts with uh, well I don't know if it starts with either. It's probably a 50-50. It's the offensive line protecting better. It's the backs protecting. It's the receivers getting open. So that's the function that Brett can't control. Mm -hmm. But I mean we all saw it. I mean it's not a mystery. You know, a lot of those sacks last year, Brett not want to concede. He didn't want to concede a play. Mm -hmm. You know, or the time clock in his head isn't synced up to know that okay, it's time to get rid of it. And so uh, that's something we continually emphasize with him. And I just think the fact that he like understands the offense better now and uh, knows where everyone's supposed to be. I think that'll help him in terms of making the decisions to throw it away or get down. So because. You know, when we went back to the uh, Pac-12 media days, the ESPN guys showed me some statistics, and Brett, his completion percentage was really high. He was better on third down in two minutes than he was even in, in game situations. But the thing that just crushed us was the sacks. I mean, we were pretty, pretty bad. <laughs> Almost as bad as penalties, or maybe worse. <laughs> so. Do you feel like because the weather's a little milder this year that you've been able to get more accomplished so far than maybe you did last year with all the 100 degree temperatures? Yes, yeah, I do. Um, I like the heat. We're about 90 probably at some point today. Last year we were around what, 105, 107. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was crazy mm -hmm. some days. So uh, I, I like this temperature. And the fact that you know we spent those two days doing something a little bit different, 
you know, we didn't need to come up here and have it just be grueling like it was last year. So I feel like we haven't had to adjust the practices as much. Um, our guys are able to work at a high tempo um, and not just get gas. We haven't had anyone fall out yet. And hopefully we don't. So I think we're going to get a little more heat later in the week, but I think they've adjusted well. I like the temperature. Of course, their ears might be bleading From after a while. <laughs> yeah. I know. We turned it down a little bit today. It's starting to get to me. Yeah. 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 Crank it back up tonight. What, what? You, I, I will take requests if you guys have requests. <laughs> or you Who's, can have your readers like send you guys requests. and then we'll, We can do that. We should do that. Twitter should, pull. Yeah, Twitter pull. We get, let's get requests. We need different genres, though. We need, we need uh, acid rock. For him. <laughs> we need classic rock. You guys finally some got Motown. one. We need some rock. Motown. We need some hip hop. I think we have every once in a while for Jerry Newheisen need to put some country in there. You know, hair bands. Had you done that before? Music? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's pretty common. You know, a lot of teams do it. Uh, there's a couple reasons. Number one, it gets them going. You know, I think there's a certain rhythm to practice. These players react to music. Music's a big part of our culture. Uh, I think it can serve as a distraction, you know. Um, I also think when it's loud and I start cussing, people can't hear it as easily. <laughs> so it masks, oh, we can, it, it can it hear. Masks, it masks <laughs> masks some of that. The players can players it. can't hear. Yeah. That's why you tear up so, the uh, yeah. play sheet. <laughs> that was a new one for me. <laughs> And then you had to pick it back up. Which well, they, and I had all these notes, and right when I did, I go, you're such an idiot, you need to have a prop or something. <laughs> well, you, you have to pick it up because you can't tell the guys about clearing the cafeteria. That's you right. Know, you trash right. I know. So anyway. You got but a the, chance to look at some punt returners today. Anybody there standing out for you? No, I didn't even look at them. You know what I was doing? I was watching the protection. I never even turned around and saw who was catching it. Um, and I haven't asked Coach Brick about it yet. You know, you see right now Shaq's working and, and Ish is working and um, uh, I think Jalen and those guys will work back there. I feel a lot more comfortable with our punt return situation than I did last year just because last year I had no idea it was going to be back there. This year I feel like we've got some guys that can do it. So. I think you guys thought about moving Max out to left tackle to guard the spine side at least a little bit. Done. Yeah, we're good. We're set. Do you, is that a huge relief for you guys to know? Not that yet. It will be when he starts playing or... games and doing well. <laughs> you know what's great is that uh, you get Simon out there, and most of the practice you go against Anthony. And so both of them are going to get better because of that. And I really see Simon improving. I mean, sure, he still has a couple lapses now and again, but he's going against an All-American, and um, he's just going to get better because of it. I feel very confident with him there. I feel very confident with Torian on the right side. I feel very confident with uh, X, Jake. And then, you know, we just got to get Caleb up to speed. But I think that I have noticed our offensive line less, which is a good thing, <laughs> you know. Where does Jordan James fit in the backfield? Um, well, right now he's number one on the depth chart. But as you guys know, the way we play and the number of plays that we're going to play in a game, you know, Jordan's going to get snaps and Steven's going to get snaps, you know. And, and I'm talking about Steven Manfred. Mm -hmm. And Malcolm's going to get snaps, you know. And if Figgy's back, Figgy's going to get snaps. And who did I miss? Perfect. And Paul's going to get snaps, you know. So those four guys or five guys, however many I just named, they're all going to get snaps. And I think that it depends on situations, on who's hot, you know. Um, but I, I feel like Jordan looks bigger to me. Mm -hmm. he, his ball security has been really good. I don't want to jinx him. Um, he's been hitting it more downhill. You know, uh, one of the things that Jordan and I always talked about in the past was, you know, he's very shifting, very quick, but I like a guy that could put his foot in the ground and go downhill, and he seems to be doing that better as well. Mm -hmm. So it's a good group, you know. Uh, is Jonathan Franklin in that group? No, but maybe a future Jonathan Franklin is. It seems like catching passes out in the flat has also kind of been a strength of his as well. It is, and that's a big part of our offense because that's kind of like a run, you know. It's, you'll see the, the kind of the option plays we run, and then Brett will throw it out there. And it's almost like the old triple option. So that guy, uh, you know, he has to have good hands because it's not a five-yard pitch. It's a 20-yard throw at times, and sometimes it's in a, he, his body's in an awkward position. So the fact that he can do that and Steven can do that well, um, you know, it's a little bit harder for Malcolm just because he's bigger, you know, not as, never, as agile in space as those guys. He's got different strengths. But, uh, yeah, it helps that he can do that. With Brett being further along, do you think you guys will run more kind of read option this year than you did last year? Or is it sort of I think same? it depends. Yeah, I think it depends on game plan and how people are playing us. And uh, 
yeah, I think it's impossible to say. I mean, it's certainly part of our package, and it'll always be. But I, I mean, I, in terms of the number of times it gets called in the game, I don't know. I think that just depends. Mm -hmm. But we can do it, you know. The key thing is if you run it and Brett starts running, is, you know, Brett has to take care of his body. And we have to make sure we help him take care of his body. Because, you know, he's too good a player to, to risk injury trying to get two extra yards by banging into somebody. And we haven't seen him slide out here. He yeah. slid yesterday once. Did he? Well, it might have been an accident, but he <laughs> slid. Yeah. I know, I'm trying to get him to slide. Hopefully tonight. I'll get him to slide tonight. So. All right. Cool. Thank you.